book two. Um, welcome to the last part of Nial's saga. This is our 2021 saga read-along. Um, I believe it's the third year we've done this. I've done them since the beginning. Um, we have a great group. Um, some of who uh, were part of this for the first time. And, and they all really added a lot. I mean, I think when you get a group together like this um, can be great fun we had a group on voxer that we usually do when we uh when we do this and uh the conversations were great the insights were great and the good sense of fun and uh comradeship while you're going through a thousand year old book now i want to be very careful this is not a novel and you can't read it like in a modern novel. It, 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 uh, but you can read it with some of the things that you find in a modern novel. Say you read an action adventure. There's tons of action adventure here. If you like legal thrillers, there's a lot of legal stuff. And, uh, and if you like travel, there's plenty of that in this part. So, uh, no, I had great fun with this. So we start the last section here. Let me get comfortable. Excuse me. We start the last section here. With the burning of Nial and his family, this is Nial's saga, it, but it's also uh, been, you can find uh, translations that, where it's called Burnt Nial. And this is supposedly based on historic uh, incident, and uh, Nial um, and his family are burnt to death in their home. Now, earlier on, when Gunner had been attacked by a, a group in an earlier section, uh, a great warrior, um, Mord, one of the characters that keeps reappearing here, had suggested burning Gunner out, and the leader of that group said, no, we don't, that's not an honorable thing to do. We're not going to do that. Um, here, the opposite happens. And... Nial's sons are so formidable that the leader of the band that is going after him, Flosi or Flosa, I'm not quite sure how to pronounce it, does give the order. So you already know it's a dishonorable order. You've heard it earlier. And uh, it's pretty dramatic. Um, women and children, for the most part, are let out. Nial's wife and grandson stay with him they're buried under they're, they go to bed and have a like a, a leather blanket type thing put over them uh scarpedon is one of the fighters um he's been a pretty big point of focus he's uh he's he's a tough guy and um, this whole, whole thing goes on, and basically the fire ends up taking out uh, the family. Uh, Kari gets away, uh, though he's on fire in pretty dramatic fashion. I think a Legolas in from Lord of the Rings running up a, chim a roof or something. And... Uh, yeah, it's pretty tragic. And and when they, when these guys ride away, knowing what they've done, they know this this is bad news, and they all have the misfortune of finding out. Okay, well, somebody got away. We didn't we didn't realize that. And so there's no hiding what was done, and people are going to react in a certain way to it. So that brings us to an all thing. Always it comes to this. So on one hand, you have. Revenge, warrior code, and then you have the all thing, which is sort of connection, sort of like a civilizing code, very formulaic, um, a law rock. You have to do everything just right, which is the way the law is, right? I mean, even in, in my own country, the law is very formulaic. You use the right words, you fill the contract out the right way. This, this is nothing un, unusual. Um, and I think they keep repeating it to make the point. This is the stability, but everybody's got to buy in. And, and that's true, right? Um, we see countries that go to civil war, like my own country did, where one group looks at, say, the Constitution one way and one looks at it the other way. Everybody's got to buy in or it, it starts to break down. 
and I think that's a great point that's made here. And it does break down. Because both sides, oddly enough with Mord still involved, go back and forth, they have their legal experts, you know, and this dr court uh, room drama is almost doomed, doom well it is doomed from the start because nobody's buying into it. Um, one lawyer is a cheat, um, so he's disrespecting the law from the beginning, everybody's shuffling for an advantage until somebody finally just snaps. Put spear in somebody, and then it breaks out into big battles. Both sides had sides, which is always a bad thing when you're armed camps on each end. Excuse me. And Kari, the guy who'd gotten away, the, the person with Niall's family who just refuses to accept this, was by the old code. We had seen earlier Christianity had is moving throughout the society and there's conflict there there's adapting ideas but there's also where they run into each other and Kari goes he's not having anything to do with this and he he heads into the hills uh, everybody seems to settle things um, Flossie and his men are going to have to eventually leave for a certain amount of time to be, be out of the country. They were, they'd be sent away and they had to make restitution. And they also have to worry about Kari in the hills because Kari, a lone man, is coming after him and he's bad news. And like I say, he lives by the old code. And there's a great humorous scene, scenes. There's, there's, there's a character that comes along named Bjorn. Bjorn's wife doesn't respect him much. Um, Kari asks him for help. He needs a place to hang out, a hideout, basically. Um, Bjorn's going to end up being... Bjorn likes to talk a little bit about how good he is and how brave he is but, and how smart and fast he is. But uh, he offers to be the second, in a way, to uh, Kari. And his wife says, I don't trust you. If you come back, you ain't getting you ain't getting in the marriage bed again if you betray this guy, and we're gonna come after you. My brothers will help me. I'll get half everything. And he just poo poos her off, and they have some battle scenes where Bjorn's actually hiding behind, as he's told to, by Kari, and they have these great battle scenes, vastly outnumbered. And they're combat scenes. They're not really. I guess they're battle scenes. And hand-to-hand -hand combat, there's one where they find a bunch of the guys he's hunting sleeping and they will let them get up and get all the best and then go at it and still win and moon some and some right off. Nobody wants anything to do with this dude. Um, Flossie, in the meantime, is trying to get ships together so he and his guys can go. They do. Um, there, there's adventure after adventure. And I love this part of the book. I just loved it. I mean... You go to the Orkneys, the Earl of Orkney, there's a scene where Flossie and one of the guys are sitting there, and, you know, the Earl wants to know about the burning of Nial because one of Nial's sons used to be in his service, and one of them's making a twist in the facts a little bit, and Kari had been shipwrecked, walks right up, walks into place, and thwunk, takes his head clean off. And you think Kari's done for, but no, he's... He's Kari, and he walks, and he's hunting everybody. There's great set scenes with the Earls and double-crossing Vikings, and they're all going down because the mom of the the wife of the former wife, who was a bad actor, of uh, King Brian in Dublin. She wants Brian dead. There's big battle scenes. And it, these characters, these fighters are fantastic. The descriptions of battles are absolutely brilliant. They're great. And the king dies. Makari, he keeps on trucking. And he hunts down a guy. He's out, he's gotten just about everybody but Flossie. Or Flosa, or however you say his name. And... There's pilgrimages to Rome by both men at different times. Um, there's payments to the Pope. There's there's all this stuff 
swirling. So you have the Orkney, you have Wales, which I found fascinating. And you have Ireland and all this stuff. There's shipwrecks, there's storms, battle scenes. And so I love, love, love this section. And, uh, but you do see from that revenge and law thing, going in between all of this is the Christianization of this society. And it couldn't have been even, and it couldn't have been accepted by everybody. The kings say what you do a lot of times. When Iceland says that's not so much true. Um, and eventually both men make their way back and there's a nether shipwreck and a storm and then Kari's going, well, we, we know Flosey's already here. We'll see how noble he is and we'll walk up to his house. And then he's greeted like a, like a friend. And there's reconciliation and there's this wrapping up of this thing. So you had, uh, you have three, I think, and I, what do I know? I mean, I'm just reading it as in a translation and I've certainly not studied it in any great detail, but it seemed to me like there was these, there's humor, like Bjorn, I love Bjorn. But there's, and there's great characters, there's set piece characters, there's types, and you see the community. So I thought the all thing, the court, the law rock, the formality of law, which is what law is, right? That's why we have big pillars in front of courts and stuff, you know, to make it look like ancient Greece or whatever. You have the old ideals of the warrior and revenge and family and extended family, especially extended family. I mean, adoptions and foster children, all that were important. And a little bit of sorcery here and there and some some magical type stuff, but not a whole lot. Um, and when it happens, it's very interesting. Um, but so the, and, and then, you, like I say, you have the all thing, the warrior code, the coming in and interaction of Christianity. And then a fourth thing, I think you really have this international stage. This saga alone does not take place only in Iceland. It goes all over the place, which is, you know, very, very fascinating. I mean, yeah, Orkneys, Wales, Ireland, all over the British Islands. I can't think of all of them. I mean, there's been trips to Norway. There's been, you know, this is an international, an, you know, international group. And it, things in one place have repercussions in another place. So I just love this, absolutely love this saga. Very, very much enjoyed everybody's conversation, viewpoints, um, and and having the Voxer chats also, but the chats down below on the videos. Um, it's just been a great read. I think thus far, it would be my favorite saga. Um, uh, I don't even know how many I've read now. I've read quite a few. And that's just in the three years. Because a lot of them are short. We do multiple sagas. Uh, this year is the exception with just one. So this Robert Cook translation, um, I really enjoyed. Worked for me. I know there's many, many other translations. But, uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to next year. I'm hoping everybody comes back and we add some, even some more folks. And if any of you read it that didn't, weren't, weren't a host, and uh, and just let me know what you thought and, and um, if you enjoyed it. And maybe what your favorite scenes or characters were. But it, this is a great big old book. And it's an ancient book. And it's it's it brings you into a world that is fascinating. So uh, hope all are well. I was a little late on this. Um, not reading it, but getting to the video. Uh, Saturday we had wonderful weather. And we took the kids hiking and all that. And after a long winter, um, that that's something just we got to do. And then yesterday... Uh, my littlest boy turned nine, so uh, he, we had a big party and barbecues, and we had to get ready that. And so we actually had family members who were vac vaccinated were able to come over, and that's a big change for us. It's been a year and a half since we've been able to do something like that. Uh, his last birthday was just immediate family in the house, so for him it was a great, great excitement, and uh, so we. I didn't get the video done this weekend, but I know I had another, I'm, I'm rambling on, Saga host here who uh, was actually on vacation. He managed to do it on time, Scott Danielson. And uh, Anyhow, I hope you're all doing well. 
I hope you enjoyed it if you read along. If you haven't, just pick it up and read it. It's, it's readable. It's very readable and exciting. So uh, to all my co-hosts, thank you very much. And uh, we'll see you next year with Sagalong. But I'll be here in between. Thank you, BookTube.